Alrighty, hello, hello everybody. This is Kiru Show here. Now, whenever we last left off, Midoriya has discovered that gaining more control over his diamond abilities in his base form, as I'll call it, is a lot harder. He was too slow to stop Mr. Compress from taking Bakugo and Monoma. Along with that, Mina got heavily injured in her fight against Muscular, breaking that power control device, and heavily injuring her right arm. Now, along with that, let's cut to the aftermath. Midoriya, he is actually annoyed. After the cops and the pros showed up, along with the emergency services, they all checked everyone out, finding everyone to be okay. Mina, the only one who has to basically leave on a stretcher. Since Midoriya, he was able to repair most of the damage, but they don't know exactly how much he repaired. Since they do at least see this large wound on her arm, that is at least covered over and scarred over. People said that people saying that that was not there before. Midoriya having to explain exactly what he found upon his arrival to the scene. Now, after that's done and everyone leaves, Midoriya would be a bit annoyed. Everyone's saying that they're going to be leaving, leaving, but Midoriya would just, well, he's still standing there. In the exact same place where he was standing whenever the ambulance left watching Mina be taken away. As he does one simple thing, he walks over to a tree and just stares at it for a minute. Now, this is whenever Karashima would come walking up. And before he can even ask Midori if he's okay, Midori would have done one thing, cocking his arm backwards and sending a punch outwards, sending it out at such a speed and such a strength that whenever it made contact with the tree, it blew away the seven behind it. Karashima actually being a bit surprised. Midori just staying there with his arm outwards, as he would just bring it back and go to throw another punch. This time, freezing as his fist is shaking, along with his entire arm, before he would just drop to his knees, Turn, turning pink and let out a loud scream, as loud as he can. The rest of the trees in front of him just being annihilated, and sent flying. Now, Karashima would be confused, along with Mr. Aizawa actually walking over, along with All Might, telling Midori that he needs to calm down, and everything will be perfectly okay. They are going to be getting their students back. Him just asking exactly how are they going to do that. Before Momo would announce that she put a tracker on the Nomu. Midoriya basically ecstatic at hearing that, along with Karashima, immediately just saying to create something to let them find them, let them track these things down. Mr. Aizawa just stating that that is not a very good idea. In fact, they need to take a minute. They've been up for quite a long time. Along with that, you may be half alien, Midoriya, or universe, whichever one you prefer to go by, but your human half needs rest. Midoriya just staring at Mr. Aizawa, and at least understanding it, as they would have headed back. They would head back to town and all be told about the dorm room system being set up. As over the next few days, everyone would get their stuff moved in. And it would be a little bit normal. Everyone's still finding it to be a bit weird. And a bit new. They're basically all like one big happy family. Except they're only missing one member of their family. Now, with that being said, to try and cheer everyone up, they would try to do a bit of a room tour. 
going into everyone's rooms and trying to figure things out. As he'd be going through everyone's rooms, everything would be similar to canon, except for Midorius. Instead of Midoriya having All Might in, well, everything plastered all over his wall, as soon as you guys do open the door, people would have actually been a bit in shock. Watching as there's something in the corner that they don't even know, or can even tell, so it's clearly gem technology. Along with a couple guitars, ukuleles, and even a bit of a music board. Jiro actually asked Midoriya if he does play. To which he would just say, yeah, he does. In fact, his dad used to be a member of a band. And, well, after a fallout with his manager, he sort of just came back to town. Funny enough, that's actually how he met my mom when he was on tour. Wait, on tour? Wait, universe. Are, are you talking about Mr. Universe? The old retro guy? Um, yeah, that was my dad. Jiro was somewhat laughing a bit, before just saying that that guy's music was awesome. Now, people are still a bit confused. As they should be. They've never heard of this guy. So, what makes him so special? Now, Midoriya would just do one thing. Asking the Jiro if she knows, well, the first song on my dad's first album. To which she would just say, yeah, walking over to the keyboard. And Midoriya picking up a guitar. As they would begin to play it. Now, with that being said, they would have been blown away by it, and actually found it to be pretty cool. And Mina would have walked in, made set, and see what's going on. Her basically jumping into the room, and immediately taking a microphone. Picking it up, and just beginning to sing. Everyone a bit confused. They didn't even realize she was back in the dorms, until she jumped over everyone else. Now, with that being said, they would have done the rest of the room tour, and things would be a bit less stressful. And then you have Midoriya and Kirishima. These two are trying to convince Momo to actually, well, make a tracker for them, to get, the no the, get to the Nomu and find Bakugo. And, the guy from 1B. Now, this still would have not been up for debate. She would have been dead set on it. The answer is no. Even then, we'll just leave it to the pros. At which, awkwardly enough, there is a knock on the door. And it is All Might. He is asking to talk to both Mina and Midoriya. Now, as soon as that does happen, All Might would take these bo both of these two outside, and they would all just jump away, All Might leaping as far as he can, asking them to follow him, the two doing so. As whenever they do get to a, well, get back to UA, in the teacher's lounge, All Might would just explain that the man who took young Bakugo and young Monoma, he is not a very good man. In fact, contrary to what you might think, he is my exact opposite. I am called the symbol of peace. Meanwhile, he is considered to be the symbol of evil. My exact opposite. An opponent that the users of One for All have been fighting for generations. Mina a bit confused, asking exactly what does he mean generations. Him just explaining, ever since the first generation of quirk users, there used to be fairly weird quirks, but no one ever talks about the strong ones. No one ever talks about the ones 
used in ways no one can even think of. You want a quirk that allows you to re manipulate reality? You can. But in the process, you'll probably scramble up your brain and end up brain dead. You want a quirk that allows you to see do anything? Go ahead, but you can't turn it off. There used to be insane levels of quirks, and then there is all for one. The ability to give and steal quirks. Now, this would have frightened these two, along with Midoriya. Not really sure what to say. All Might is explaining that Sir Nida is on his way, and he's going to look into the current future, seeing exactly where we stand. He will be here tomorrow. After that, the raid will be the next day. If we are lucky, we will get everything planned out and be able to take all for one down tonight. Or that night. So, I am asking for both of you to come along with me. Midoriya, you have bested me in battle. That is no easy feat. Back in my glory days, me and All for One were equal, squared off toe to toe. He gave me my injury, I blew off the top portion of his skull, and I thought he was dead. What? That, that doesn't sound possible. Oh, but it is. And not just that. I fear what would happen if he got to that fountain. If he were to find that, he would make a discovery most foul. I was brought back up to my 100%. But him, he will be brought back past that. I am not sure if that thing can turn back time. But if it can, he may go back to his prime. And that will be the most dangerous thing ever. Deku actually being a bit surprised, as learning that All for One, at the, over the age of 100, is still up around and kicking ass, that is impressive. However, if he's getting weaker with age, then that just proves exactly how strong this man can be. Now, with that being said, days would pass, and the heroes begin to get everything in order. As you do have Midoriya and Mina go with All Might to see Sir Nidai. Sir Nidai, he's fairly certain that the best possible future to look into is Midoriya's. And he would look into it. As soon as he looks into it, he would actually be taken aback a bit, somewhat moving backwards and falling over. And seeing exactly what type of horror the future holds. All Might a bit shocked. Sir Nana has never done that when making a prediction. The last time he did, he heard the earth was about to be destroyed. Even then, that was more dangerous. Now, this is whenever Sir Nana would just go on saying that that boy's future holds many dangers. But, I... So now he's just keeping his mouth shut. It holds many dangers, but it also holds many upsides. Many things that he cannot say. If he says them, he might change them. Now, Sir Nidai would just say one simple thing. The boy is going to change his future. He already knows that. Let's hope you change it for the better, young man. You're going to be... Before you just stop, saying a force of nature. Now, with that being said, things would continue, and it is the night of the villain's raid, or the raid on the villain's hideouts. And one thing would happen. Midoriya would talk with Karashima and tell him that he's going to get Bakugo back for him. And they're also going to get one Class 1B's shithead back too. So there is no need to worry. Even then, we basically have three All Might's on our side. 
now. Deku would have actually given a smile, which would make everyone feel a little less nervous, before turning around and walking away, running to catch up to All Might and Mina. As soon as he does, though, Mina would watch that smile on his face fade back to, well, just motionless and still, as if she actually does grab his hand. Midoriya actually taking hers and squeezing it. And the two are a bit nervous. This is going to be a big deal. If All Might falls tonight, then the symbol of peace falls. Now, everyone is in place after making the right preparations. You do have Midoriya and Mina actually put together on the same team. They are going to be raiding the villain's hideout with All Might, while the B team is raiding the Nomu factory. This is going to be a bit tricky. They need to make sure that everything is perfectly fine. As Midoriya would do one thing, floating upwards into the air and actually just holding out his hand. Mina throwing out Black Whip as Midoriya would just grab it and hold onto it. The two going upwards. As he basically does hold out his other hand and just point to a window before moving a bit upwards into the air and actually holding out his arm and making a bit of a gesture as he gets ready. The entire idea is that Mina is going to jump through a different window than him. She's going to jump in one on the other side of the building. He's going to jump into one directly into the bar. So, that is going to be a bit different. Even then, if he needs to, he can just bust a hole through the wall. This is not going to go exactly like back in the forest. They are going to win. As All Might would make this signal, smashing through the bar door as Taki would just throw his arm out forwards, and Mina would just lunge outwards, swinging with all her body weight as she smashes through the wall too, directly in front of Dobby. As Dobby would jump out of the booth and go to bring his hand up, Midoriya smashing through the wall and actually grabbing him. As he would just throw up a bubble and immediately just throw Dobby outside the window. Dobby going smashing downwards into the ground. He might be up inside of a bubble, but that does not mean he is safe. Now, this is whenever Midoriya, he would just begin to help take down everyone. Moving at hyper speeds in order to keep Shigaraki from touching people, decaying them. And make sure that Toga, Splinter, and Twice, I don't believe Twice was there. Everyone who's at the bar will basically be taken down, because Midori would be able to use his heightened speed to work on everyone's reflexes. Along with the person who basically does take down Karagiri, which I believe is Edge Shot. I think that's his hero name. Now, Midori would have been actually a bit more impressed. As he would run through the run through the entire building looking for Bakugo. And he does not find him. As he would just calm down. And things would speed back up. Everyone basically getting re-alert and noticing these minor movements and changes. As Midori would just say that Bakugo is not here. Which would have prompted All Might to try and force the information out of Shigaraki. Asking exactly where are the young men, or where are the two young boys that you two kidnapped. Now, this is whenever they would go on saying that they don't know what they're talking about. They're just some bar patrons and you or just some local heroes in the wrong place. Before, All Might would have told Shigaraki to cut the acts. He knows that he was in the USJ, or even connected to the USJ attack. He may not have been there, but he knows people who do recognize your face. Especially that young man right there. Him looking up and seeing Midoriya. His eyes somewhat widening. He remembers that kid. That kid is the one who basically punched him in the face. That little trick he did at the sports festival is the same one he did on me, isn't it? Interesting. I gotta find me a quirk like that. Now, with that being said, 
This is whenever Shigaraki would get covered in this liquid. And it is strange as he gets teleported away. All Might immediately turning and heading for B-Team. As he hears over the comms that something is going on over there. And that the building has someone just exploded. All Might watching as Mina and Midoriya are straight behind him. As the Deku would have told the officers to go outside and deal with Dobby. He is still in one of his bubbles. As Dobby, after being thrown around like a ragdoll, is a bit more injured. The police dealing with him. Now, after that, this is whenever, whenever they do get to the other location, All Might, he would have immediately come in and thrown a smash. As All For One just bring his hand up and immediately blasts All Might away. Actually a bit surprised, saying that it took him two seconds to get here. That is honestly pretty fast. Hmm. Your age is beginning to show, All Might. Besides, you're forgetting. Even if I fall, I can just come back. Now, this is whenever Mina and Midoriya would jump in. Mina rushing in as she goes to throw a punch at All For One. All for one actually going to throw out his hand to do air cannon once again, before Mina would just throw out her fingertips and immediately blast acid at him. Him actually moving to the left, getting out of the way, as Midori would also rush in. As soon as he does though, he would have found out exactly why that was not a good idea. He's directly behind All for one as All for one would have just thrown his hand outwards. Midoriya actually having to dodge it as he goes to bring his leg up going to kick off one directly in the spine. Before one thing does happen. Off one would just turn around and send out a large air can once again, as he does begin to form the All Might killing weapon. This is actually horrifying Midoriya and Mina. All Might's eyes widening as he does hear a sound. There are multiple people behind him. And this is not good. Along with that, there is another problem. All Might does not believe himself to be strong enough to take this guy down. As he would tell Midoriya and Mina to go help the other pro heroes get the civilians out of here. As the two would rush away and go to help more heroes. Midoriya's super strength helping him to get around and actually move through the rubble very fast getting a lot more civilians out of there in a lot less time. As Mina is able to burn through and actually help a lot of civilians with her own strength and speed. As one thing would happen, the two would step back into battle. Midoriya actually throwing out his hand and asking Mina if she's ready. As this is a bit odd. Off one just watching as Mina takes Deku's hand. And Deku would just begin to spin her around, before actually throwing her over, as she basically just is looking at all four upside down, coming back up and kissing Midoriya, as the two fuse into Mizuku. Now, all four's not too sure exactly what to say. That was not only the strangest thing he's ever seen, but also very interesting. He does need to find a cork like that. Wait, this boy is the gem. Now I remember. Now, this would be whenever All For One would just rush forwards and go to throw out the All Might Killing Weapon directly at these two, as Mizuka would bring her hand up, blasting acid and fire directly at All For One. As one thought courses through their mind, best powers ever. Now, all of them would have been a bit surprised, going to throw up his hand to block the attack, before remembering that that is also acid, and trying to go and dodge, All Might rushing in and going to throw a punch, all of one beginning to attack and fight with All Might. All Might. Now, it would go somewhat similar to Cannon, but Mizuku being there, would be able to help out All Might. 
her rushing in and using 100% of full cowling. Being able to beat into and actually fight with all for one. As eventually it would come time for All Might to do his final smash, as he calls it. He feels the embers of, well, not the embers, but All Might, one for all, he feels the power already leaving his body. He has been getting weaker over time but he's been trying to at least hide that by pushing himself more. And getting healed was actually a big help. So, he might have to retire soon, but this is not going to be his final battle. He knows that. He should still have no power left after this. As him and All Might, All for One would collide. One, the All Might being able to smash All For One into the ground as All For One be able to throw up his hand. Blasting a large shockwave into All Might as he gets sent flying. Along with him throwing his hands and his fingers. Being able to pierce into All Might. Piercing directly into one of his shoulders. And actually being able to stab directly into one of his lungs. Mizuku rushing in. And actually being able to grab onto these things and tear them directly off of All for One's fingers. As they would rush in and go to attack him blowing a large gust of fire along Thermor Acid, rushing forwards as Pink Mizuku with, with one for all, being able to punch off one across the face and knock that mask off of his head. As with their left hand, they would have brought it up, immediately smashing it off one's face once again, the two beginning to just beat on him over and over and over again, until they do turn pink once again. And inside their fusion, one thing is happening. Mina is telling Midoriya to calm down, and that they need to stop. Meanwhile, Midoriya is ignoring her a bit, and telling her that they need to make sure he's down. If any of those possible futures not I said exist, then this is not going to be it. As he goes to throw out his hand, before he can come in, this is whenever someone is grabbing now, this is whenever Eraserhead would actually wrap his scarf around her arm as she goes to throw it forwards, and it basically does not move for a minute. Her a bit confused, she would look at this, watching as she goes follow it, seeing All Might holding on to the other end. Mizuku a bit confused as her vision does begin to blur and actually mess up as they do see a butterfly, finding this to be a bit odd and confusing, along with more things about Midoriya's past, seeing a giant bird as the two do freak out, and actually go to back away. More and more instances begin to appear, as the two's fusion would finally become far too unstable, and they would defuse. As soon as that happens, Izuku is basically just laying on the ground and beginning to back up more, bringing his hand up and making a bubble. As the heroes are kind of confused at what just happened. And Mina would try and comfort him. As soon as she told Midori that she is here, Midori would have dropped the bubble. And she would immediately just wrap her arms around him, telling him that everything is okay. What, what was that? Midori not really saying a word. All Might taking notice to that. There is something there. The young boy doesn't want to really love something. Hmm. Well, I cannot blame him. Being him must be hard. As All For One would just begin to laugh a bit. And tell All Might that today he has won. He won the battle, but the war is not over. Young Shigaraki is still out there. I know it. You know it. Funny enough, <coughs> as All Form begins to actually bleed a bit from his mouth, saying that Shitomura Shigaraki, or his birth name, Shitomura Shimura, quite interesting, isn't it, All Might? All Might hearing this information, his eyes would widen. And he would just get angry. As he understands now, 
His former master's grandchild is now a villain. Him getting very pissed off this information. Beginning to walk forwards and go to attack all for one. Beginning to just shout at him and berate him. He had no right to do that to that child. He had no right to just steal them from a loving family. He had no right to just make them a villain because he thought it would be interesting. Before, he would just begin to explain. That boy was a villain long before he found him. Even then, the day he did, he already killed his family. All Might's eyes widening at that information. As, well, all of them will be taken in. All Might, not attending to this himself, since he's being detained and kept away from all for one. He might actually kill this man if he does. Have to take him to prison. Now, along with that, some people are aware of what happened with this young man from UA. Now, that is still a bit odd. Along with trying to figure out what happened, Hasashi wanting to call and talk with his son. Trying to actually do so. Being able to sit Midoriya down and try and talk about some things that have happened in his past. Trying to explain to Midoriya that there are people here who love him. If he needs to talk about something, he can talk to any one of them. It doesn't matter what it is. The world is still a weird place. You shouldn't be ashamed to talk you should not be ashamed to talk to your emotions. In fact, why don't you talk with your girlfriend? I think that would be a healthy outlet. But well, I'm not saying you can't talk to me, I'm just saying that. Share how you feel. Him just trying to explain it better. As they would have been able to rescue Bakugo and Monoma from the League of Villains. Now, with that being said, you do have the other events. Like the Provisional Hero Exam. Where Midori would just explain that whenever he was, well, he learned about one of his abilities being that his eyes change color. That was actually quite a bit interesting. He didn't understand that. In fact, his mom, not his mom, the Crystal Gems told him about that when they showed him a video on you. As you'd understand exactly what he was about to say. They showed him a video on the internet of their sports festival. Him immediately just whipping out his phone and going to look up something. Before just shouting all around the bus that no one else broadcasted their sports festival. Azawa actually a bit surprised. The boy hasn't even figured it out yet. Well, they're not even there, and the boy's already figured it out. He is interesting. Now, with that being said, this is whenever the exam Everyone would be a bit surprised to see Izuku Midoriya. All of them, well, a long line of people wanting to line up and actually meet him. Since, well, the dude to save the planet on multiple occasions. Along with saving a city. That's pretty impressive. Now, with that being said, Midoriya would just shake everyone's hand and understand what they're all talking about. Along with a lot of people questioning exactly Mina, since she is technically a three quark wonder. Now, with that being said, the exam would go where Midoriya, he's using his pink ability to fly around, along with Mina actually coming along with him. He's basically making sure that everyone in his class can pass before he gets points himself. Now, after everyone in class when I gets past the battle portion, they would have the rescue portion. Where Midoriya, he would excel at. Along with Mina. Bakugo actually being able to pass through this along with Todoroki. Since Todoroki was more open, after he was told by Midoriya after the sports festival to go see his mother. And to talk with her. Besides... If I was able to sit down and talk with my mom, then I would. Go see her, Todoroki. Now, 
That was all the advice he needed. With that being said, they would all pass, Midoriya actually getting a bit of extra points. Since some of the people who were pretending to be injured were either sick or at least did have a little bit of men physical problems with their body. Midoriya using his healing tears to actually fix those, which would have actually surprised the judges a bit. They've never had an instance like this before, so yeah, he got extra points. And let us cut over to Yue with the Mirio fight. Mirio he is really interested in talking to and seeing the first years. Along with that, that pretty powerful guy, he heard that he beat All Might. So this is going to be really interesting. As they would have all introduced themselves. And Doria would be the main topic. Mario doesn't want to face off against Class 1A. He wants to face off against Midoriya to see exactly where he stands. But, well, eventually the entire class got suckered into it. And he would have to go along with it. Whenever he does face off against them, he would take everyone down. Except for the two power couples. Midoriya and Mina, and Karashima and Bakugo. These four are the only ones left standing. Nejure and Tamaki coming in. Nejure going to attack Bakugo, and Bakugo going on the offensive, using a more enhanced version of his AP shots, and that tornado thing. Except he does have a combo move with Todor the combo move with Todoroki. Wrong character. Combo move with Karashima. Karashima basically holds on to him, and whenever he does do that tornado thing, he basically launches forwards with the entire force, like a missile. This actually being called the Rocket Launcher. Now, that would have actually been able to fly Karashima in as he hardens up to a point nearby his unbreakable mode, if not his actual unbreakable mode. And he would just smash into and grab on an edge array, her blasting him into him with her spirals as these two would have gone smashing down into the ground. And Karashima would have actually been able to take Nedre down. Tamaki being the next one on the list. While well, Midoriya and Mina are facing off against Mirio. Mirio is having a tough time simply just trying to take Mina down. She's too fast and anytime he does try and stay solid, she throws a black whip and makes multiple tendrils, being able to control them with her hands. As she would be able to just sweep through most of his body, trying to find anything solid that she can. She hits something at least once, or a few times. He doesn't want to admit it, and it's beginning to get annoying. As Midoriya would have quickly taken down Tamaki, by simply throwing one punch when he does hard enough to the point of a clamshell. He would just throw a punch directly at the shell and it would break in half, Tamaki being sent flying across the entire, the entire room or the building they were in, and slamming directly into a wall, not being able to reuse his quirk. Now, with that being said, Mario would have actually just said he wants to face off against the diamond guy, and Midori would have actually allowed him. Midori just telling him that Mario won't last a few seconds, or even, let's say a minute. Mario actually being ready, as the two would face off. Midoriya speeding things up, and immediately just running over to Mirio, being to just throw punches at whatever he can. He would just throw punches through Mirio's entire body, and anytime he finds something solid, he would just make sure to hit it, over and over and over again, as he would also allow time to resume, or speed back up. Now, this is whenever Mirio would just go into the ground, and immediately come back up. As soon as he does so, Miri, Izuku would have caught back his arm, and him and Mina would just throw a solid punch directly forwards. These two being able to send Mirio flying and take him down. 
him actually being very surprised, as he is in the wall. He doesn't want to admit it, but Midoriya was right. Jeez, if these are first years now, then I can't believe it. I'm so far behind. That just means I need more training. Now, with that being said, I do believe that that is the end of this what if. And I do hope you guys enjoyed. And I'm pretty sure there are some of you screaming at the comments about me, not including Steve, the, the monster form. I am saving that for something. Do not worry about it. I did not forget about it. I'm just saving it for something. Now, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day. And I will catch you guys in the next series.